On March 13th, the world was thrown a curveball. The COVID-19 pandemic changed our Don Bosco prep forever. The saying goes, it's not what happens that matters, it's how we respond. On May 5th, we had a clear vision about how our day of giving would help to keep our various programs thriving and assist our students and their families during these desperate times. The pandemic hit hard, but we came back even harder, creating Bosco Cares Fund. Thanks to so many of you in our community, including all of you, I am very proud to say we're almost at our $1 million goal. Thank you. Thank you for your role in getting us this far. We invite you to find it in your hearts to invest in our young men, to show them you care, just as we are doing today with the class of 2020. Every gift you give will go right to the Ironmen in need Let's do it for our Ironmen, for our athletic teams, for our robotics and engineering programs, for the fine and performing arts, for our multimedia who's right now backstage producing what you see today. So again, I thank you on behalf of the entire Don Bosco community for everything that you've done for us. I want you to know that all our boys and all our families will receive every single dollar towards tuition aid this school year to those that are in need. And there are many families that are struggling right now. So please find a way to help us. I'm Bob Fazio, president of Don Bosco Prep. And I thank you all for all that you do for our community. We are Bosco. Are you a CEO in the making? Do you see yourself designing the future of AI? Will you be directing the next Oscar award-winning movie or the next Emmy award-winning TV show? Are you Broadway bound to win a Tony or two? Don Bosco Prep's Academic Pathways program allows you to get a head start on your future. Through rigorous academic curricula, project-based learning, and experiential opportunities, each Pathway program offers a unique educational and real-world experience. The Business Pathway aims to create leaders and entrepreneurs in society. It offers two tracks, a general business track with classes in personal finance, accounting, marketing, and economics. It also offers the Leadership, Entrepreneurship, and Opportunity track, the LEO program, providing opportunities for aspiring entrepreneurs to learn the ropes and learn from experienced professionals. The Communication Arts Pathway allows students to go behind the scenes in real world scenarios to learn all about TV and film production. From industry leaders to broadcast quality equipment, they learn techniques in pre-production, production, and post-production. The Engineering Pathway Program uses robotics and hands-on project-based learning as a medium to foster the technical and teamwork skills necessary for success in today's ever-changing technological environment. The Fine and Performing Arts Pathway offers three tracks in music, theater, and art. Music students build skill, artistry, and music literacy and have the opportunity to perform alongside distinguished musicians. Theater students cultivate life skills, self-expression, and confidence through various theater experiences and performances. Art students are introduced to technical skills and fundamentals of art, fostering a love of experimentation and revision. Our Academic Pathways program is available to students within the context of our holistic liberal arts academic program. Students collaborate with alumni, parents, and friends of Don Bosco through guest lectures, mentoring, and field work. These moments enhance the learning experience and prepare our students for college majors, future careers, and much more. If you're interested in an education that transcends beyond the four walls of the classroom, 
Don Bosco Prep is the place to be. Thank you to the class of 2020 for everything you've done for Don Bosco Prep during your time here. In the age of COVID-19 and so many uncertainties, one thing that we do know for sure is that we want to make sure that all of our students are safe and healthy upon their return to campus. And we would love for you to leave a legacy that is healthy for our students in the 2020-2021 school year and beyond. Your generosity and participation in the senior class gift will ensure that we can comply with all of the CDC guidelines and make sure that all of our students feel safe and that we can keep up with sanitation during the school day as we reopen in September. So thank you in advance for your participation and consideration and best of luck in the future. Everybody circling his vultures, negative, nepotism. Everybody waiting for the fall of man. Everybody praying for the end of times. Everybody hoping they could be the one. I was born to run. I was born for this. Whip, whip, pull me like a race horse. Pull me like a rip cord. Break me down and build me up. I wanna be the slip, slip. Word upon your lip, lip. Better that you rip, rip. Break me down and build me up. Whatever it takes. Cause I love. Doing whatever it takes for me means stepping out of your comfort zone every day, making no excuses. I'm Jake Robbins, I play quarterback for Don Bosco Prep, and I'll do whatever it takes. I'm Alex Tracy, I'm a wide receiver at Don Bosco Prep, and I do whatever it takes. My name is Lincoln Stewart, and I'm a defensive end for Don Bosco Prep, and I'll do whatever it takes. I'm Jake Guy, I play offensive line at Don Bosco Prep, and I'll do whatever it takes. I'm Elijah Clark, and I'm a wide receiver at Don Bosco Prep, and I'll do whatever it takes. Ah! I do whatever it takes by staying in touch with teammates and keeping morale up. Bosco on three, Bosco on me. One, two, three. Bosco! So the Bosco experience for me meant an extension of me. Everything that I could be for my sons, I was able to extend that or, you know, have that extension through Bosco. They took such good care of my sons. I had a demanding job. I worked many hours and they took care of my kids. And that, that's the most important thing. That's what you want from your children. That's what you want. You want to be able to feel comfortable that you're leaving your kids your children, your pride and your joy in the hands of willing, loving, trusting people. Join us for our open houses this fall. 
For more information, please contact our Director of Enrollment Management, Mr. Chris Donnelly at cdonnelly at donboscoprep.org.
classrooms slash socially distanced large group settings. In order to protect fellow students from potential germs and allergies, each desk must be sanitized and wiped down after the There will also be temperature checks. This policy is designed to lessen the likelihood of a potential outbreak in our community. The way in which this will take place will be online as well. All solutions, administration, project team staff will be required to take their own temperature before arriving at school each day. Wow, and that seems to be all the time we have for now. And now, on to the mass. That we have the opportunity to come together. How lucky we are to be sitting here this evening together as one family. It's been a long road. Many obstacles and many challenges that have been put in front of us but we've pivoted, we've adapted, and we have overcome. We promised you men that this moment would happen and how blessed we are to have our Salesian community lead us in the baccalaureate mass. As many of you know, during many of our videos, we talk about how fluid and challenging this pandemic of the COVID infection has challenged us, even to the last moment of this wonderful event. So you'll see that you have a program in front of you that had to be adapted. We had to modify it because of the spikes that are in our area. We have challenges around what we were able to do tonight. So please sit back, know that we did everything humanly possible to make this a special night. We tried our very, very best under extremely difficult circumstances to pull this back to glory mass off this evening. I wanna thank you for having your masks on. I want to thank you for practicing social distancing. We want to thank you for being here. It's critically important that we follow the guidelines of the state and local mandates. It's very, very important. Please, please, everybody, during this event, follow the directions that are put forth. And at this time, I would ask everyone to please rise.
the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Grace and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Welcome home. Welcome to the, the graduates of the class of 2020. Welcome to your parents, your family members who are here. It is so good uh, to see human beings on the campus. Yesterday at 5 o'clock, there were three deer running through the chairs. See? So wonderful to have you back here among us and to pray as a family for our graduates, to pray for their futures as they go forward, that their hearts may always possess the love of Jesus we experience at this meal. Let us call to mind our weakness, our sin, our need for God as we ask for mercy. Lord Jesus, you fill us with joy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you fill us with mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you fill us with peace. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. God, our Father, you sent your Son among us to open for us the way of God's love. We pray today for our graduates. As they take their leave, may they follow the way of love, always willing to do what is good, never afraid to stand for what is true, advancing the kingdom in our world by lives of loving service. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Please be seated. from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, whether you eat or drink, or whatever you do, do everything for the glory of God. Avoid giving offense, whether to Jews or Greeks or the Church of God. Just as I try to please everyone in every way, not seeking my own benefit, but that of the many, that they may be saved. Be imitators of me as I am of Christ. The word of the Lord.
anyone comes to me without hating his father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, and even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. Whoever does not carry his own cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. Which of you, wishing to construct a tower, does not first sit down and calculate the cost of to see if there is enough for its completion. Otherwise, after laying the foundation and finding himself unable to finish the work, the onlooker should laugh at him and say, this one began to build, but did not have the resources to finish. Or what king, marching into battle, would not first sit down and decide whether, with 10,000 troops, he can successfully oppose another king advancing upon him 20,000 troops. But if not, while he is still far away, he will send a delegation to ask for peace terms. In the same way, every one of you who does not renounce all his possessions cannot be my disciple. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you. Well, welcome home, especially to the graduates of the class of 2020. It's so good to, to see you back on campus, even with masks and socially distant. The campus looks more or less the same as when you left it in mid-March, little change. 
But there's one big change with the bodega man, the one whom you knew as Brother Sasika, who became Deacon Sasika in December, is now Father Sasika. wisely got himself a seat in the shade. I don't know how he did that. Huh? And I want to point out that a special friend of yours has come today to celebrate with you. He left us last year, you will recall, to go study in Barcelona, Spain. But he wanted to share in this day with you, and so we joyfully welcome back Brother Travis. to begin today with a word about St. Ignatius of Loyola. As the Salesians celebrate St. John Bosco on the last day of January, January 31st, the Jesuits celebrate their founder, St. Ignatius, today, on July 31st. And Don Bosco was a big fan of Ignatius. So he wouldn't mind me talking a bit about him. I think Ignatius says something to us during this time of pandemic and to you as you graduate from Don Bosco Prep. Ignatius was a young man from a noble family and he was making a splash. He had status, he had wealth, and he had a promising military career ahead of him. And then one day, a cannonball shattered his leg. And it required months of convalescence, and everything in his life was brought to a sudden and unexpected halt. He found himself isolated socially distant, we would say, and alone as he convalesced. And the only books that were on hand for him to read were A Life of Jesus and The Lives of the Saints. And as he read, his conscience was deeply touched. And thus began for Ignatius a long turning Jesus Christ, whom he had really not known before. His vision was changed. It became 2020 vision, if you will, clear vision. He saw how all that he had valued prior, status, wealth, fame, was really relative. And that if he wanted to be happy, the foundation of his life was not to be in those passing things. Rather, he discovered in that time apart that he was deeply cherished and loved by God. Deeply. And his happiness in life would be in accepting that and then sharing that love experience with others. He read the lives of these saints, individuals who had constructed lives on God's love and did so much good in the world. And he asked himself, if they could do that, then why can't I? So Ignatius set about constructing a life on the love of God for him and on sharing that love with others. He chose not to make a splash with his life, but to make a difference. Now, like Ignatius, the life we had five months ago has been shattered, not by a cannonball, but by a pandemic. 
life as we knew it was suddenly brought to a halt by a disease that spread and continues its harrowing and deadly march throughout our country and throughout the world. It has brought isolation. The lockdown of peoples in their homes. The shuttering of businesses with an assuming financial march. The closing of schools and churches. The overwhelming of hospitals and medical personnel caring for the sick. Thank <laughs> you. 
The term alma mater is used to refer to a school one attended. Technically, it means nourishing mother. As you officially become alumni, know that Don Bosco Prep, your alma mater, will, like a nourishing mother, always welcome you to her home. And know that we will remember you, the class of 2020, with special admiration, great gratitude, and the warmest of affection. God bless you. At this time, I invite Mr. Donnelly to the podium to announce the graduates of the class of 2020. Thank you, Father. As I read your name, please stand and remain standing to be recognized for your academic achievement. We ask that any alumni fathers who are accompanying their graduates, please also stand and be recognized. So that the names of all graduates may be heard, please refrain from applause until the names of all graduates have been called. Antonio Michael Abate. Alexander Joseph Aborde, Andrew Accardo, Andrew Adderley III, Joseph Andreas Alcide, Nicholas P. Allen, Kevin Cosme Alvarez, Nestor Alfonso Antigua, Nicholas E. Ortega, Jaquil Rashad Bats, Aiden Michael Beal, Ralph Robert Benedict III, Jordan Michael Bennett, Jalen Andre Berger, Philip John Bacacci, Sean Paul Blandine, Constantino 
Jay Borelli, Jason Origi, Jake T. Brazano, Timothy Don Brennan, son of Don, Don Bosco Prep Class of 1986, Gregory Francis Brew, William Connor Brooks, Andrew James Bryan, Aiden Scott Yule, son of Scott, Don Bosco Prep Class of 1986, Stephen Matthew Usinich, Yaniel Miguel Camposano, Tyler James Capriati, Alex Stepan Caputo, Michael Mario Pio Castrillion, son of Michael Don Bosco Prep Class of 1990, Edward Cho, Dean Celestino Cintron, Troy Alexander Clement, Jonathan Maximilian Coca, Ryan Cooper, Michael Anthony Costanza, Brian William Cody, Michael Lewis Courtney, Daniel Michael Danzi, Christopher M. DiLorenzo Jr., Robert Don John DeLucia III, Jake Aiden DiMatteo, Francisco De Rosa, Adam Michael Domino, Nicholas James DeVario, son of Thomas Don Bosco Prep Class of 1984, Daniel A. Donahoe, Michael A. Dresden, Brandon Baraka Edwards, Joseph Charles Eitner, son of Joseph Don Bosco Prep Class of 1984, Dennis Ursas, Dylan J. Estevez, Michael Kean Falla, James Patrick Fian III, Michael Anthony Fiorillo, Riley Alex Flores, Thomas John Flynn Jr., Christian Jeremy Foreman, William Edward Fortescue III, son of William Don Bosco Prep Class of 1988, Luke S. Fortunato, son of Stephen Don Bosco Prep Class of 1988, Zachary Lucas Foti, Justin Thomas Frey, Luke Skyler Gadsen, Frankie Christopher Galano, William Nillis Gall, Giovanni Angelo Gianella, Messiah Amari Godfrey, Aiden Macaulay Gottlicker, Gabriel Richard Gopin, Jameer Rashadi Green, Robert Vincente Greenleaf, Alexander Alfonso Hall IV, Ian Michael Hamilton, Paul Angelo Harris, son of Paul Don Bosco Prep Class of 1981, William Joseph Haynes, Patrick Charles Healy, Liam Garrity Heffernan, Blake Simmons Helmstetter, Joss R. Hinden, Joseph Nicholas Hitman, Hunter Lightfoot Holban, Dio Geodir Hostin, 
Brock, Moxwell, Hunt, Arshin, Nazir, Giles, Christian, Jimenez, Isaiah, Kishon, Johnson, Williams, Ethan, Thomas, Joseph, Jacob, William, Giardini, Wanbin, Kang, Ryan, Matthew, Kivini, son of Dennis, Don Bosco Tech, class of 1980. Michael Keller, Christopher Michael Kennedy, Sean Michael Kenny, with us in spirit is Sean's father, Don Bosco Prep student from 1985 to 1986. Michael Demetrius Korkalakis, Conrad Arter Lalik, Thomas Joseph Lane, Isaac J. Lee, Matthew Lee, William Lennon John Lennon, Dean Francis Logan, Angelo Sal Lucrezia, Sean Patrick Lyons, Colin Murphy McKen, Hunter Patrick Mayer, son of Mason Don Bosco Trep. Don Bosco Tech class of 1987. William Joseph Masano. Michael Edward Marion Jr. Edward John Markowski. Vincent Joseph Massa IV. Isaiah Mathis. Gabriel Ramon Masonet Jr. Nathan Mazurik, Kean Brian McCormack, Teague McCormack, Brian Patrick McDonald, Hunter Michael McGee, Brendan Joseph McKearney, Cameron A. McKee, son of Paul Don Bosco Prep Class of 1992, Darren. James McKenna, Max Elliot McLeese, William Colin McNamara, John Francis McNicholas, Marco A. Mealy, Anthony Simon Mello, Alexander Mercado, Liam Joseph Miller, Niall Patrick Maloney, Stephen Noel Maloney, Nicholas Troy Monaco, Kyle Mieno Ibobi Menangai, Gabriel Matthew Montalvo Zadar, Emmett Patrick Moore, Jarek E. Morlate. Hayden John Moses, Jordan Isaiah Moses, Justin Elijah Moses, Jeremy Paul Moynihan, Ryan Joseph Mullahy, Robert Edward Maraca, Michael Thomas Murphy, son of Michael, Don Bosco Prep Class of 1993. Brendan McCalcio. Nicole Darkaj. Daniel Thomas Knapp, son of David, Don Bosco Prep Class of 1991. Trevor Cole Nielsen. Michael Patrick Noonan. Kevin James O'Brien Bruno. Matthew Christopher O'Connor, Liam Riordan O'Malley, Justin Eric Orioles, Anthony John Passerino, Jack Brian Petratus, Davis Douglas Phillips, 
Marvin Perry Pierre Louis, Robert Antonio Plastina, Andrew Frederick Rameda, Luis Anthony Ramirez, Colin Marcial Ramos, Christian Alexander Rendo, Kieran Johnson Williams, T. Avery Rice, Jarrett Cameron Richmond, Devin Jeffrey Rivera, Casey Thomas Rizzo, Romaine Amarni Robinson, Max Cooper Rothenberg, Nicholas Spiro Rotundo, Daniel Salvatore Russo, Miles Ruth, Jason A. Lasso Saguero, Nicholas Michael Salaroli II, son of Nick, Don Bosco Prep Class of 1981, Christian Smithhauser, Luke Joseph Schrenk Garcia, Brooks Mason Scott, Christopher John Secafico, Michael Gerard Serafin, Jonathan Scott Singer, John William Skay III, son of John, Don Bosco Prep Class of 1985, Aaron Carner Sklarski, Jacob William Smith, Cole Thomas Smith, Michael Anthony Smith, Matthew Christopher Sabowitz, Alexander Luke Soto, Owen John Stanzak, Kevin Thomas Stefanski, Robert James Steinberg, Nicholas John Stewart, Michael Joseph Sutera, son of Scott Don Bosco Prep Class of 1988, Dekeel Kotash Sparks Thompson, Wojciech Stanislaw Tatsuski, Arthur Michael Zimmerman, Lee Alexander Turner, Christopher John Vela, Eric Christian Jose, Benjamin Samay Waba, Hunter Daniel Waldau, Albert Weglars, Nicholas James Weschke, David Ledford West, Liam Christopher White, Patrick Nin Nguyen, Henry Joseph Jordan, Ethan Jacob Zeisman. At this time, I invite Mr. Morelli forward to certify the class of 2020. Thank you, Mr. Donnelly, and will the members of the class of 2020 please remain standing. After having satisfactorily completed four years of academic studies, as prescribed by the New Jersey State Department of Education, and in accordance with the accreditation of our educational program by the Middle States Association of Colleges and Schools, I affirm that these candidates have fulfilled all requirements as members of the class of 2020. It is with great honor that I present these young men for your validation and their diplomas. Don Bosco Preparatory High School has received approval and accreditation of our educational program 
from the Middle States Association of Colleges and Schools. We are empowered to issue diplomas to our students who have satisfactorily completed a course of studies prescribed by our charter according to the standards maintained by the state of New Jersey. Acting in the name of the administration and faculty of Don Bosco Preparatory High School and by the authority given, by, given me by the state of New Jersey and the Archdiocese of Newark, I am honored to declare you the members of the class of 2020 graduates of Don Bosco Preparatory High School. Please join me in congratulating the class of 2020. Congratulations, gentlemen, you may be seated. At this time, we will continue with our celebration with the prayer of intercessions, and I invite up Joey Hostin to lead us. Thank you. Please stand. With confidence in the abundant goodness of the Heavenly Father, we turn to him at our time of graduation and place at his feet all of our needs. As the Lord hear our prayer. For our church, that all believers may grow in their love for God and continue to be witness and instruments of that love before the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For our graduates, May their future unfold under God's grace and protection. May their joy be complete, and may, their answers, may they answer God's call for service in Him. Their brothers and sisters, through the spirit of St. John Bosco, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have guided and helped our graduates, their parents, their families, their teachers, staff, administrators, friends, and classmates, may God reward them for their love and support, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear us. For those who have died, our, our deceased family members, um, alumni, and friends, may they rejoice around God's table in paradise. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear us. Gracious God, you are present with us in this Eucharist, and you accompany us always through your Holy Spirit. Accept now our humble prayers and petitions for your beloved children. We ask this through Christ our Lord.
Brothers and sisters, pray that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Lord our God, we offer you this bread and wine, and we offer you the lives of our graduates. Transform them by your grace into the presence of your Son, Jesus, who is Lord forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Truly right and just it is always and everywhere to give you thanks, O Father of mercy and faithful God, through Jesus the Christ. His death we celebrate in love, his resurrection we confess with living faith, and his coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mystery of faith. We celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection. We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, 
giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, Bishop of Rome, and Joseph, Bishop of Newark, and all who serve your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, St. John Bosco, St. Ignatius, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. and sisters, we are all children of one God, so let us pray together as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. So look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you all always. This is Jesus, behold the Lamb of God, who brings us healing, peace, and love. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. This time we have the blessing of giving First Holy Communion to Brock Maxwell Hunt. So I ask that everyone quietly be seated.
and pray for Brock. And may I ask Brock and his parents to please come forward. According to the directives given by the Archdiocese of Newark on reception of Holy Communion during COVID-19, Holy Communion is only permitted in the hand. When the Communion ministers go to their respective stations, you can form a single line with a six feet distance with your mask on. And one way the traffic pattern is observed. Please follow the arrows on the floor. When approaching the communion ministers with your mask on, you should make a single slight bow of the head, receive the host in hand, step to the side, lift your mask, and consume the whole host reverently. If you do not wish to receive communion, please remain seated.
Lord, in this spiritual food, you strengthen us with your grace, and you send us to a waiting world. Go forth with our graduates, guide them always, and make of their lives a blessing for others. Grant this through Christ. Each year at our baccalaureate mass, we present two awards to recognize the outstanding contributions of educators or parents in the work of collegiate education at Don Bosco Prep. Our first award is the Mama Margaret Award, named after Don Bosco's mother. She worked alongside her son, Don Bosco, with the young for the last 10 years of her life. This evening, we want to honor a woman who has worked at Don Bosco Prep for over 20 years. She has sought not to make a splash, but a difference. She has taught. She has worked with students who like to ski or snowboard or students who like to play the bagpipes. And year after year, she has captured the essence of our school community for students through her great photography and her hidden and sustained work with the Bosconian yearbook. In the spirit of Don Bosco's mother, she has offered her gifts with humility and sacrifice to enrich the lives of the young, and to make us a better home, school, church, and playground. So with loving and deep gratitude for her service to the Don Bosco Prep High School community, we present the Mama Margaret Award to Miss Susan Fecht. takes the picture of the winner every year, so we need a photographer.
Our second award is the Francis de Sales Award, named after St. John Bosco's patron, a patron who was known for his kindness and his zeal. We honor a man tonight who came to Don Bosco Prep temporarily as a substitute teacher, and he stayed for 15 years. He became a permanent teacher. Like Francis de Sales, he offered much wisdom to our students about history and law, yes, and about golf, yes, but also about having integrity, caring for one's family, and finding strength in God. He retires this evening, and he will be sorely missed by students, parents, and colleagues alike, for he has shared with us both human goodness and Christian faith, making an impact in lives by his teaching and by his living. With loving and deep gratitude for his service to the Don Bosco Prep High School community, we present the St. Francis de Sales Award this year to Mr. John Finn. At this time, I invite Mr. Morelli up to introduce our valedictorian. Congratulations again, Ms. Fett and Mr. Finn. It is customary at commencement exercises that the valedictorian of the graduating class offer a few words to his classmates and their guests. At, my time, at this time, it is my honor to present to you the valedictorian of the class of 2020, a distinguished scholar who will be attending Cornell University in the fall. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Gabriel Matthew Montalvo-Zahler. Before anything else, I want to thank the administration for giving me the opportunity to speak on behalf of my classmates today. I would also like to thank all of you, including Mr. and Mrs. Ciceri, the chorus, the musicians, Father Jim, all of the Salesians, the teachers, the staff, the administration, and of course, parents and friends and families for celebrating us, the class of 2020 today, even at the risk of your own health. On behalf of the class of 2020, I also want to thank the administration for working so tirelessly to give us this in-person ceremony. And we are most grateful that New Jersey law and the administration have permitted us to be here today. The class of 2020 has seen no shortage of change in our time as students. In freshman year, the Health and Wellness Center was still a cafeteria, and Savio Hall was still just a parking lot. Sacred Heart Chapel had not yet been built. We still had a library, and the bookstore was still packed into that small room on the left side of Immaculata Hall. Now, four years later, 
we've seen the construction of two media centers, the expansion of the bookstore, the construction of Savio Hall, the Quad, the Sacred Heart Chapel, and the Health and Wellness Center, and the dedication of both the Dr. Scanlon Plaza and the Major Thomas Kennedy Memorial Park. And now, of course, this most unexpected pandemic. Though its appearance may have changed drastically over the years, Don Bosco Prep has never once stopped being a home for all of those who come here. It is no coincidence that the first of the elements of the oratory is a home that welcomes. Before it is a school, a playground, or a church, Don Bosco Prep is a home for all of its students, its teachers, its administration, its employees, and all those involved in the community. Beyond the physical buildings that make Don Bosco Prep a house, there are deep bonds of family and friendship that connect everybody in this community and foster a sense of home born from the Salesian tradition. A home is not a home without the family that lives there. Accordingly, teachers at Don Bosco Prep are more than just teachers. They do not simply stand in front of the classroom reciting lessons according to their lesson plans. They talk, they laugh, and above all else, they invest themselves in the education of every student who enters their classroom. I cannot count the number of times a teacher moved a test or assignment out of consideration for their students' workloads. In many cases, <coughs> teachers go above and beyond and use leftover class time to teach their students about other topics whether that be in history, music, philosophy, current events, or more. I can look back only with fondness at memories of Mr. Kilduff playing us songs from decades long gone, of Mr. O'Connor passionately teaching us impressionable sophomores about the Vietnam War, of Mr. Zewiski teaching us aspiring Latin scholars about anything from architecture to philosophy to modern history and of Mr. Darcy regaling us with stories of his life before teaching theology. I can clearly remember teachers making every effort to involve themselves in the lives of their students on this campus, such as Mr. Trinati and Mr. Jacobson organizing regular Ultimate Frisbee Club meetings, Mr. DePiro playing with, and often losing to, us at gaming club meetings in Mr. Burrell's room after school, and coaches Shav and Gorman finding maybe just a bit too much enjoyment in beating teenagers at pickleball. <laughs> I distinctly remember the feeling of unfamiliarity and discomfort I felt when walking into class on the first day of freshman year. I didn't know a single person. Being a socially awkward 13-year-old, I was understandably nervous and shy. Soon, however, I found myself with many new friends, most of whom I fortunately shared multiple classes with. That feeling of unfamiliarity disappeared, only to be replaced with an overwhelming feeling of belonging. I cannot tell you exactly when or how it happened, but somewhere along the way, I had gained a second home and a second family. By the time sophomore year began, there was no place I'd rather be. By then, those new friends had become people I would gladly call brothers. This is part of the reason why an overwhelming majority of the class of 2020 asked for an in-person graduation ceremony. It was unthinkable that we would not be able to conclude our time here with those people we called brothers. And even though we might now be here as students of Don Bosco Prep for the last time, we will still always be brothers, no matter how far away from this campus we might be. I have made so many cherished friends and memories here that much of me is sad to go. But even so, as I move into the ever uncertain future, I am glad to have been able to spend these past four years in this place. Though we may have missed out on two and a half months of our senior year, on senior prom, on senior gratitude day, and on countless other senior traditions, we are more than the class that lost out because of the pandemic. We are, before anything else, the class that experienced all that DBP had to offer and were made better for it. As we each move on to the next phases of our lives in these strange and unprecedented times, each of us carries a piece of the Salesian spirit, that sense of family, that bond of brotherhood that will inevitably draw us back here 
to our second home in the coming years. Thank you, and congratulations to the class of 2020. Thank you so much, Gabe. I would be remiss in not recognizing the fact that this year we had a tie for salutatorian. So ladies and gentlemen, please join me in congratulating Mr. Aiden Bell and Mr. Michael Porkalakis, our salutatorians for the class of 2020. Jazz, please stand. Thank you. As Mr. Fazio mentioned earlier, we were asked to be fluid with this evening's programming. And in your programs, you will find a list of all of our award winners and scholarship winners for this evening. However, there are two awards which we did want to acknowledge in person tonight. At this time, I invite Father Sasika to the podium to announce the winners of the Don Bosco Award. The Don Bosco Award was inaugurated at Don Bosco Prep High School to commemorate our 85th anniversary. The winners of this most prestigious award must meet certain and stringent criteria in the academic field as well as in co-curricular activities. The, awardee, the awardees must also demonstrate the qualities of character, service, and leadership, which are the hallmarks of the Salesian education. The following graduates have met and surpassed the criteria and are recognized with the Don Bosco Award. Please stand when your name is called and the award will be brought to you. Nestor Alfonso Antigua. Tyler James Capriari. Jonathan Maximilian Coker. Joey D. Hostin. Thomas Joseph Lane. Colin Marshall Ramos. Christian Alexander Randall. John William Skate III. And Nicholas John Stewart. Let's have one more round of applause for the Don Bosco Award winners for the class of 2020. Congratulations, gentlemen, on your achievement. It is now my honor and privilege to present the Outstanding Graduate Award. The Outstanding Graduate Award is presented to a senior who demonstrates superior qualities and virtue in all aspects of student life. A student who has demonstrated excellence in academics, loyalty, and service to the school, 
and has manifested a wholesome attitude during his four years at Don Bosco Prep. In short, whom we desire all Don Bosco Prep students to emulate. This year, the award for the outstanding graduate is presented to Michael Lewis Courtney. Thank you very much. Congratulations, everyone. Father Jim. I invite you to stand for a solemn blessing. And after the recessional hymn concludes, I would ask you to be seated for some announcements from our assistant principal, Mr. Chris Moore. The Lord be with you. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Gracious God, bless our graduates. Before they were even formed, you knew them. While in their mother's womb, you called them. And at their birth, your breath filled them with life. Today, we celebrate what they have become in their four years at Don Bosco Prep as they have found here a home that welcomed, may they always give a warm welcome to others whose paths they will cross. As they have found here a church that evangelized, may they announce to others the good news of God's love in Jesus. As they have found here a school that prepared them for life, may they use their learning to help others whose lives are less fortunate. As they have found here a playground where they met friends and enjoyed themselves, may they continue to reach out to others in genuine friendship and solidarity. May St. John Bosco, who awaits them in heaven, bless them. May Mary, help of Christians, who is a genuine mother, protect them. And may your son Jesus, who is their way, their truth, and their life, lead them to genuine happiness. And may Almighty God bless you the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in the peace and in the joy of Jesus Christ. On behalf of the Don Bosco Prep Communication Arts Program, we would like to congratulate the class of 2020. Thank you for joining our broadcast. Before we sign off, Rear Admiral Michael Vernazza would like to say a few words to the graduates. Thank you. President Fazio, Principal Morelli, students, parents, faculty, staff, fellow Ironmen, and most importantly, the graduating class of 2020, congratulations. As a proud Don Bosco Prep alum from the class of 1985, I'm truly honored to be one of your virtual commencement speakers for this very important day. I can't believe that it was 35 years ago that I had the great privilege to find myself in the same position as you about to graduate from the Ironman and make my way into the world. Time sure did go by fast. In the 80s, we had the beginnings of MTV with real music videos and great New Jersey artists like Bruce Springsteen and Bon Jovi playing on our portable Sony Walkmans that were all the rage at the time. Now, you have smartphones and the Jonas Brothers with the internet and more computing power than we ever dreamed possible. The future is bright but before you start your next adventure, I'd encourage you to take some time to thank the people that helped you reach this important milestone. Your parents, relatives, teachers, faculty, and staff of Don Bosco Prep have worked tirelessly the last four years, and most recently in unfamiliar territory, to bring your senior year to a successful conclusion, despite the enormous challenges and pressures this crisis has presented. In that spirit, I want to personally thank all those at Don Bosco who instilled the character and drive in me to excel in a career of military service. I did not envision a 30-year career when I went to the Naval Academy, but from first driving ships and going to sea, to working in intelligence, to now leading Navy Cyber Forces in the Pacific, it's been a truly amazing journey. I've seen the world many times over with deployments to South America, Asia, Europe, the Middle East, 
And it made me understand that freedom isn't free. And we have to work at this American dream every day, just as you are doing now. So what will your future be and how will you move ahead? One step at a time. With the education, character, and discipline that were instilled in you at Don Bosco, you are all poised for success. From here forward, the choices are yours to make and you need to own them. In Navy speak, you are now the captain of your own ship. Take responsibility for your actions, make smart choices, and do everything you can with the utmost integrity. It sounds easy, but it isn't. Right now, whether you realize it or not, your integrity, rooted in trust and honor, is a prized possession that only you own. My advice to you is don't ever relinquish them, because once you do, they are very difficult to get back. As you enter the world outside Don Bosco and Ramsey, New Jersey, you'll see that more and more of your life, in college or in the job market, will involve greater and deeper relationships with others. That's just how the world works. It only takes one slip up to have someone question your integrity and lose trust in you. Your word is your bond. Be vigilant in guarding it. It will pay you dividends throughout your life and set you up for success no matter what you do. My next point is simply, hard work pays off. I was a product of hard work and I will attest to you that it does indeed pay off. As a teenager, I had a paper route, mowed lawns, shoveled snow, and parked cars at the Meadowlands Hilton while maintaining good grades and competing in athletics. These commitments developed a discipline of hard work, teamwork, and sacrifice that has served me well. I mention it to you because sometimes we all take our eye off the ball. It's easy to get complacent. We lose focus and fall victim to an easier path with less obstacles, less challenges, and less hardship. Remember, to get something you never had, you're going to have to do something you've never done. Keep the pack on and stay focused on the goal. You'll be glad you did. Finally, a brief talk about character. Think about the challenges and successes in your life so far. How you handled them says a lot about you and your character. If you have achieved success in school, sports, a hobby, music, scouting, or countless other areas, were you gracious and kind to those that helped you along the way? Did you thank your teachers or coaches who put in countless hours to help you succeed? And if a team's event, did you share the credit with your teammates? How about adversity? It also builds character. Adversity sharpens your thinking, challenges you to be better than you thought you could be, do more than you thought you could do. It causes you to focus and gives you the strength to persevere. While we would all prefer success, we will each have our share of adversity. So don't be afraid of it, meet it head on, and use it to strengthen your resolve and learn from it. I don't mind telling you that I'm a little bit envious of the adventures you have ahead of you, and I hope yours prove every bit as rewarding as mine have been. You are the future leaders of industry, academia, military, and government who will carry us forward. You are the promise of the future and represent the best our nation has to offer. My task to you is take the solid foundation you have developed at Don Bosco and challenge yourselves in whatever your future endeavors are. Stick to your values, keep the faith, and live your dreams. Have the courage and fortitude to inspire and act and become the servant leaders our nation requires. In closing, let me leave you with the words of then New York Governor Franklin D. Roosevelt before the 1932 presidential election, which was the first election held during the Great Depression. By Inauguration Day, March 4, 1933, most banks had shut down, industrial production had fallen to just 56% of its 1929 level, and at least 13 million wage earners were unemployed and farmers were in desperate straits. Sounds familiar to today's situation, doesn't it? FDR said we need the enthusiasm, imagination, and the ability to face facts, even unpleasant ones, bravely. We need the courage of the young. Yours is not the task of making your way in the world, but the task of remaking the world in which you will find before you. I wish you all the best in whatever lies ahead. I know you will succeed. Remember integrity, hard work, and character, and remain humble as you carry yourself through life. From a New Jersey Route 17 Ironman, thank you for allowing me to be part of your graduation. 
May God bless each of you, your families, and the United States of America.